Hey, what's going on? Jordan Valeriot here. And in this video, I'm just gonna take you inside one of my mixes and show you a metal vocal mixing chain. So let's just dive right in. Um, here's a little chunk of the song in the finished mix. Solo it up for you. So we got the lead vocal split onto two channels here just because there's a bit of overlap. Um, but exact same processing chain and I have it set up in Pro Tools so that anything I change on one of these tracks also gets mirrored automatically on the others. So here it is soloed. Alright, so let me just basically take everything off and then I'll show you one at a time what I did here. So the first thing in the chain here is the tape head plugin from uh, Massey plugins for saturation. Uh, but I'm actually going to show you the compressor first because this is the first thing that I actually put on uh, the vocal when I'm mixing. So you can you can see why I put that that plug in first um, when I start mixing. Um, obviously, it just like it does like 80% of the of the work right away. It just takes that vocal, just puts it right up front, gives it a lot more kind of energy and aggression and presence. I mean, it already sounds pretty good in the mix like that. So with that compressor on, then I'll go back and start putting some things on before. So this tape head, I don't do it every time, um, but if I feel like the the scream needs a, just a little bit more, a little bit more hair on it, but also maybe smooth out some of the high end, you know, it's a tape saturation, right? So it's gonna maybe smooth out a little bit of the high end on transients um, and just thicken it up uh, and warm it up a little bit. So that's what I'm doing here. It's pretty subtle, so I'll solo it for you. So it might be a little hard for you to hear, but listen to like the low mid range specifically. You can hear how it gets a little warmed up uh, and a little thicker there. So from there, will EQ. And again, I want to put the EQ after that because it, the tape head is adding some like some extra low end. So I want to make sure if I want to take some of that out a little bit and control it a little bit more then I have that option. Um, and then I'm also EQing into the compressor because I don't want to EQ after it because, you know, the compressor creates some spikes, in, you know, in transients and the EQ might just like, if I'm doing a big boost on EQ, that might just like emphasize some of the kind of dynamic spikes that are created by the compressor that I'm using. So I like to, you know, be able to do aggressive moves on the EQ and then compress after that to just kind of like provide a boundary for it and just control it a little more. So here's an AB of the EQ. So you'll hear it get just more present, more just focused in that uh, upper mid range. Let's solo it. So just a little high pass filter here at 100. Uh, we're boosting at 8K, uh, only a 4 dB here. Typically on a scream, um, I might have to boost a lot more than that, depending on the mix, depending on the raw vocal, but it was actually not that dark coming in anyway, so it didn't need that much. And then also another boost around 4.5K, I'm doing a little more there, 6 dB, and then a mid-range boost. Uh, this is kind of the biggest boost I'm using, actually, um, just below 2K, so about 1.7K uh, right there. So that's going to help it just like 
stay above the guitars in that crowded mid-range kind of 1k area it's going to help it really cut through on various um, listening environments so let's check that out specifically you don't want to have your vocal your lead vocal like too scooped it might sound kind of fancy and nice in solo um, but in the context of a mix you need that that kind of one to two k range uh, for it to stand out so typically what i'll do is i'll literally just like play the vocal and you know give it a, a good boost right here and then just kind of sweep this around from like 1k to about 2.5k and try to find the sweet spot for that particular vocalist where it's just cutting through the mix really well so you can hear if i go down to 1k here it's a little too boxy and as I get more above 2K, it's like a little too thin and harsh. And then right there around 1.7 where I ended up, it's kind of like you get a little bit of that kind of thicker uh, mid-range sound of the 1K, but also a little bit of the presence. It's a good sweet spot in between. But again, depending on the vocalist, that might be more towards 1K sometimes, and then maybe more towards 2 or 2.5 uh, and other times. And you'll notice I'm also using the compressor uh, here just to level it off uh, a little more, even going into the uh, CLA 76. So this is six to one, uh, fast attack, fast release, not doing too much, but it's also after the EQ. This is kind of just focusing it and like shining it up before it goes into the uh, compressor. And you'll notice there are no cuts on this EQ. It's the only EQ I have on the vocal chain. Um, I don't really, I hardly ever cut uh, EQ on vocal. In fact, I can't really remember the last time I did it unless it's, you know, just got a ton of low end buildup. You know, maybe I'll do like a little dip at 200 or something like that. Uh, but no surgical cuts, none of that stuff. Um, you don't really want to do that on vocal. It's just, it's just going to kill it. So then we have the compressor, which I've already showed you, but now let me show you with everything going into it. A narcissist is humbled by a gun. Obviously, it gets a lot louder. It's just bringing up like everything, all the character, all the attitude, you know, the, the breaths. Uh, you can see I'm not afraid to use a lot of gain reduction. I don't really care how much gain reduction it's doing. I just, you know, turn up the in input knob until I get that aggressive upfront in your face sound that I want. And like I said at the beginning, that's like really that one plugin is doing 80% of the work here. So after that, now you'll kind of notice that the S's, the consonants are a little harsh here. So we need, a, we need a DS. And personally, I've always found this to do best towards the end of the chain. I know some guys like to DS a lot before they EQ and compress. Um, whatever, I, I can see that working just fine. Uh, for me, I like to do everything, get the vocal like just how I want it, as bright as I want it, to where you know the S's are, are poking out a little too much. And then I'll just tame that with a de-esser uh, near the end of the chain. So lately I've been using this Wave Sibilance plugin. I think it's been around for a while, but I kind of just discovered it recently. And I, I really like it because I kind of just open it up and just turn the threshold and um, range. And it just works. It's kind of like a smart de-esser. So it's not doing a ton, and I don't want to totally get rid of, um, you know, the presence of those sounds, but just enough so that it's not annoying and harsh to the ears. Take until there is nothing left to take. Can you say the day? All right, and from there, we throw in some saturation. So I'm using the Escalator plugin from uh, Black Salt Audio, which is the plugin company that I started last year. Um, and this is pretty typical, you know, before I 
you know, before I designed this plugin, um, I would use something like Decapitator or Crane Song Phoenix, and I would still use those sometimes as well. But uh, I love Escalator. I, lo I love what it does here, just adding some more um, richness and fullness to the sound, but also um, a little bit of edge too. That's that's what this plugin is designed for. It it, d it is designed to have a little bit of aggression to it while also warming up and thickening up sounds. Take until there is nothing left to take. So this might be a little bit subtle to your ears again, um, but let me just A-B it a couple times and listen for just like the, again, just the size. Like it just just gets a little thicker, it just becomes a little bit more of, of, of what it is. Take until there is nothing left to take. Take until there is nothing left to take. There's a little bit of subtle distortion there uh, as well. You can hear it a little more if we, if we crank it up. I'm not wanting it to be like crunchy like that. Just thicken it up enough. Last thing in the chain is uh, the L1 limiter. I've been using this thing at the end of my vocal chain for almost as long as I've been mixing probably. Um, classic plugin, love the sound of it, and not doing a ton here, just really taming uh, the peaks at the very end. You can hear that, like just because of the way the compressor set, um, you know, the attack's slow enough that it lets some of the transient through, which gives it that like uh, upfront aggression that I want out of the vocal. It also creates like a big transient spike, um, which can kind of also be harsh and distracting to the ears. So the L1 at the end is really just to like chop off those uh, extreme uh, peaks, basically. So you can you can see what it's doing here. Oh God! So you hear that G, the G that's really like by the compressor, it's, it's really pushing that up front. So we just tame that with the L1 here. So I'll do one more off and then on. Oh God! Oh God! To your there you go. The G doesn't like take your, take your head off anymore with that. So that's it. That's the entire vocal chain. Nothing else on the bus. Um, the only effect for most of the song is just uh, a short stereo delay. Uh, I think I've done another video showing you that uh, go to delay effect, and then I just automate some other reverbs and vocal and uh, vocal delays when I want it to be really huge in the mix. You know, maybe uh, some super heavy parts like this. Something like that. So hopefully this helps as you're mixing your metal vocals, scream vocals. And to be honest, like uh, even a melodic singing vocal for a rock track or a pop rock, rock track would be fairly similar to this. And you can, again, check out another video I've done with those kind of genres. But just want to give you an updated uh, look at what I'm using on a, a metal vocal mixing chain these days. So uh, if you like this video, then uh, I got plenty more. Check out the channel, subscribe. And if you're interested in uh, getting more help and going deeper and becoming a truly world-class professional mixer. That's what we help people do inside the pro production system. You can click a link below if you want a little more info on that. All right. Thank you for watching. Take care.